can see the code? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is what we were doing yesterday, isn't it? Yes. Sir. And um, we discussed about um, polynomial and multi uh, linear. Okay. Okay. So yes, yeah, polynomial with it. Okay. So now I'm going to delete this part, okay? And I'm going to talk about SVM, okay. correct? Yes, sir. So we already have SVM here, right? Oops. Not required. Okay. From a scalar import matrix. So this is done. Okay. okay. So you are talking about okay uh, implementing SVR. Okay. So SVR we are trying to find a curve. Okay which will accurately or correctly okay or more accurately i would say right predict these values okay so uh, what is the y pred here okay so first i have to predict right what is y pred y pred equal to svr object dot did we do fit? No, we haven't done fit yet. Yeah. Right. Uh. We have just split the density. Right. So we can uh, do fit and predict in same line. That's what I was thinking. Let's do fit first. So fit is your X train. Y train and y train. So we'll fit it here and then we can say dot predict. You can do it in different line or you can do it in same line. Predict, okay? And here we give x test, isn't it? Okay, so this is going to run poly degree three and we will get Okay, so these are your values. Okay. 0.16 is, is R square. Okay, 0.16 R square is a very bad score, isn't it? Definitely, this is not a good fit. The third, where the you know where SVM is more important is by using RBF. Okay, radial bias function. Okay. Now, the concept behind it uses is radial bias function using the two variables that it takes, okay? Uh, it takes your uh, degree, sorry, C uh, and gamma, okay? Gamma generally is less than one, okay? And C will be generally more than one, okay? So what we do here, okay? Uh, okay, so we will create SVR object Okay, SVR object, and we say SVR kernel equal to RBF, RBF, okay? And then it has C, I'm gonna say 100, and it will have um, gamma. Gamma talks about how much curve, like, uh, you know, the, the figure will have, okay? So it talks about the shape and C, C talks about the error, okay? We will visualize this when we uh, talk about in uh, classification, but I'll show you how do you find this value. So, okay. So now you see here, okay. Um, if you talk about say um, C and gamma, right? How do we find what is the C value? What is the good C value? What is the good gamma value? Okay. 
there is no shortcut okay there is no shortcut to find the perfect gamma value and perfect c value okay so what we will do is okay we will put it in a double for loop okay so first we'll we'll fix the gamma value okay so i'm going to say for i in range okay we'll start with 0.01 we'll go up to end and we will increase by 0.1 okay so 0.1 would mean um, okay and and we'll start with 0.1 only or you know uh, it's uh yeah let's start with point 0.1 so point 0.1 okay point 0.1 point 0.2 it will run 10 times isn't it and now i'm going to say for j in range okay c will start with 0 go up to 100 and we'll go by 10 right and here we'll put this inside the for loop Okay, c equal to j, and gamma equal to let's say i. Okay, and uh, now we will print RMSC. Okay, so this whole thing should. Okay, and I'm going to calculate MSC, RSC. all these things okay and here i'll say print okay um print first we'll print the i value right so print put f i or we'll say i equal to i not i i would say here It's gamma, right? Gamma equal to i. Okay, c equal to j. Okay, and you have RM. Let's go with just RMSC for now. RMSC equal to RMSC, right? Okay. So we have this. Okay. and everything looks good okay so this will generate 100 values isn't it let's not generate 100 let's generate only 5 into 5 25 i'll make it okay and this things not required for now let's just delete it okay so let's run this and see up okay here it is treated as this right so i'm going to say while i is less than equal to 1 okay i plus equal to 0.2 okay and here i will say i equal to 0.0 okay so it will be 0.2 point i is less than 1 Thirty-two. What does it say? Okay, this has to be inside, isn't it? Okay, sorry. This is here, right? C equal to J and gamma equal to I. Y prime equal to. C cannot be zero. Yeah. We'll start with ten. C cannot be zero, right? You cannot get shape. So now you see this. 
okay when comma is 0.2 okay c is 10 30 50 70 90 okay now if you see here in this case okay for gamma 2 the error is 42000 for gamma 4 it is 42000 it's not changing, right? Is it changing? It's not changing. No, sir. Why is it not changing? I'm saying C equal to J, gamma equal to I. It should change, isn't it? Why test by red? Okay, so kernel equal to RDF. We have C. Okay, so instead, we'll make it 1000 here. Yeah, this, there is some change here, now, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, now yeah. you see. So see when gamma is 0.2, it is around 40,000. When gamma becomes 4, it is also 40,000. When gamma becomes, it's all 40,000, right? Okay. So let's change gamma also to an extent. So I'm going to say 0 here, less than 1, and you increment by 0, 0.5, let's say. So here I will make it zero and will increase by 0 0.05. Okay. Data is also less. That's another reason. Okay. That's why you are getting uh, these values here. So 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. See, one more reason is that data is also a small data. That's why you won't see the much difference. But we should see some difference here, okay? So, degree, gamma, i. Okay. Let's make it spy. Zero five and instead we'll make it point one. <laughs> so, so. Four point one it is four seven. Okay. Four four zero point five it is four seven. Right? And as we as we increase this value, the error is coming down, right? So definitely answer is not in 0 0.005. It should be closer to, okay, see here also, if you see the value is coming down, isn't it? 4716, okay. And okay, first compare gamma value. Here it is 47197. And here it is 47161. Yeah. So as we increase the gamma value, it is becoming better and better. Okay, gamma value 0 0.047197161. 1, so as we increase the gamma value, it is going better and better, right? So 47197. Uh, okay, 47. What? Now see here. After this, okay. Now for gamma is 4, 0 0.5197197. It improved to 1.6. From 1.9, it became 1.6, right? Now, again, it is becoming 1.97. That means somewhere here, gamma is best value. Okay, gamma is better around 4.05, okay? So now, what we'll do is, we'll start 
zero point zero five, right? Zero point zero three, and we will go up to zero point zero six. Okay, so this is how you have to reduce the range and see where the value. So see the error. Error will first start decreasing, and then it will start increasing. That means somewhere here you have the solution. Yeah. Then now from here to here you will again increase the range. So you are just magnifying this. Yes, yes, Earlier we are running by point one. Now we figured out that okay between these two it is the, now we will increase by point zero one. Then you increase the point zero zero one. So we are trying to magnify. Okay, try to find the values where exactly this is. So there is no shortcut. You have to run, you know, these kind of loops and keep changing value of c and gamma to figure out where exactly. Now you see this. It is thirty-three thousand. It was forty thousand. Now it has become thirty-three thousand. So definitely, this is we are going in right direction. Now thirty-three nine three nine, thirty-three nine three nine. That means most probably. Your, uh, you know, this is the perfect zero point zero five is perfect. So in this case, gamma will be zero point zero six, zero point zero six, right? That is your gamma value, and then you keep changing your c. So first you will keep changing, uh, you know, um, the gamma gamma value. Okay. Now figure out gamma is probably around zero point zero six. Then you change the C, okay, and same thing you do with C. Okay, you see when uh, C is ten, what is the value? Hundred, thousand, ten thousand. What is the value? If it is between hundred and ten thousand, then you have to now expand between. Uh, I mean hundred and thousand. Then you have to expand with hundred to hundred. Okay, first you are doing multiples of ten. Now you will go and do multiples of thousand between thousand, two thousand, three thousand, and see where it is. Okay. Again, if you find that between four thousand and five thousand, the best value lies. Again, you will go and go between four thousand and five thousand, right? So till you reach the minimum value. Yeah, minimum R square value. Yeah. Okay. This is how your R square will, sorry, uh, your R square will be maximum or your RMC will be minimum. At a given particular, okay. So RBF again. Um, uh, here it is difficult to demonstrate the uh, the, the plot, but uh, you know we will change this R R. I mean C and now value, and you can see how the plot changes in classification. Okay. Okay. Then we talk about next one is decision tree. Okay. Now, decision tree is all about creating those decisions, different blocks. Okay, and then it figures out. Okay, um, let's say so you have. Let's say on x and y, you have some values, right? And uh, you have all these. See, in regression, okay, it's all single values, right? That's why visualization will not give you good uh, this thing. Okay, all these are values, okay? Now I'm trying to. i'm trying to you know uh, break okay or create multiple groups okay what happens to the value how does value change okay how does the value change for example values, okay so values on x axis and y axis okay so let's say you have um, on this side you have age and you have salary suppose okay so age is let's say 
five, ten, so on, and thousand or ten thousand, something like that, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. Okay. Now, if I have to figure out, okay, what is the, um, uh, you know, how to find um, um, certain categories, certain groups. So you can, you know, you can start from anywhere. Okay, I can say, I will start from age, okay, 35. So now you're creating a two decision where age is th less than 35 and greater than 35. Let's say less than equal to 35, greater than equal to 35, greater than equal to 35. So if this is a 35 range, okay, so you have started creating a decision like this. Okay, so if I stop here, you will end up getting two groups. This whole thing has one group and this has another group. Yep. Okay, so now if you just start with just one level, okay, so you know, so you get one here. Now what it says is now you create another decision on X axis. Okay, so let's say on X axis, I say 40,000 here, let's say. So I now start creating another group, okay, which where I'm saying salary, and you have to do alternate, okay, age, salary, age, salary, 40,000 less than, greater than, less than, equal to. So, so this is your 35,000 and this is your 40,000. This has become one group. Okay, this, if you stop here, okay, so now you have get, you have got four groups. Now, now you start again, okay, another group. Now see, here if you see, okay, if where we are meeting this X and Y, you don't go any further here. Okay, you will not go on this side because we have not yet decided on what will happen here. If age, is, uh, if age is less than 35 and salary is more than 40, we have not decided yet. Right? So you end up getting how many groups? Greater than 35 is all one group. Okay. Less than 35, you have less than 50. This one group we have created. So we, we end up getting one, two, and three groups. You see that? Yes, sir. Okay. One, two, and three group. Now, again, let's say you go here and I'm saying, this is less than 40, so this is greater than 40. So this side. Now this side again, I will go and say age. So age is anyway less than 35. So I cannot go beyond 35. I have to say 20, let's say. So now I'm going at this 20 here. Okay, so you can choose uh, these values randomly. Randomly you can choose and you can create multiple groups. So more groups you create, more, you know, smaller uh, groups you will have, and better will be your accuracy. That's the general tendency. So, so decision tree, you're only creating one set of group. And let's say, you know, after doing this analysis, you get these groups. So, you know, this have one group, second group, third group. Okay. Now if you have to predict the value here, something which lies here. Okay. You can take the average of these all and you say that, okay, if somebody's age is, let's say here, age is 35. So you can predict that average of this whole thing will be the salary, not at this point. Okay, average of all these is considered as same value, similar values. And average of this will give you the average of, or the prediction for this value. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. So same thing, now let's implement in, I charm here. So I go here and now I have to call this decision tree, right? So from sklearn.tree, import decision tree classifier. No, you want regressor, right? Not classifier, regressor, okay? Now here I'm going to say regressor equal to decision tree uh, regressor okay and you say random state or you know whatever 
so you know so if i don't give random state it will start from anywhere yeah, yeah. right random state means it will go for a fixed set of values okay so decision tree okay and uh, now you can say fit regressor dot fit okay and x train y train okay and y pred equal to regressor dot predict you have x test right x test and then you can copy same stuff from here where predict we have done so it's made ms MSC R square equal to you say R square indentation address. Okay. So this is what we got from decision tree. Point nine three nine. Now, when you run it again and again, okay, this is called weak algorithm because you know you you have no way to control the uh, here. See, in SVM you can control, right? You can control gamma and C value, right? But here you can't control the the decision tree. Okay, it it will just start from anywhere it wants. So sometimes you got ninety percent, sometimes you're getting seventy five percent. See, now you got ninety five percent. Okay. So that's what's called weak. I mean, you can't, there's no fa factor for us to control this. So the stronger version of this is called random forest classifier. Okay. In random forest, it creates multiple decision tree. Okay. And this is strong because here you can assign how many trees you want. You want 500 trees or 20 trees, you know, you can create. So um, it's called ensemble. Okay. Now there are again uh, different types of um, uh, um, ways to make a stronger or uh, a weak algorithm stronger. Okay. There are multiple ways to make weak algorithm stronger. Okay. Um, you have something called as boosting. Okay. And ensemble. Okay. So let's say you have. Um, Okay, so two ways to make stronger algorithm, uh, weaker algorithm is stronger is boosting technique. There are different algorithm here, okay? So it's just a technique name, boosting and you have um, ensemble. In ensemble, what we do is we run multiple, you know, same, same algorithm, okay? Ensemble also has a, a difference here. So, okay, so uh, in fact, um, if you see, there are three ways to do it, okay? You ensemble, okay, boosting, okay? And we'll talk about ADAPT boosting and uh, um, different types of boosting, but boosting generally is a concept, okay? So I just said, boosting is one concept, ensemble is another concept, and there is one more concept called as um, bagging, okay? Yeah. Boosting, ensemble, ensemble, and bagging. Okay? Boosting is where you, you run one output, okay, you run one algorithm, you give the input, you get the output. This output is now, okay, Your next input. Next input. So you're trying to filter, okay, multiple values. So so when when it is giving the output, it even says, uh, you know, so it's like this, okay. Let's say I give an assignment, okay. Let's say I give 10 questions as an assignment. 
Okay, so in in boosting concept, student one first student will pick up the ten questions, will solve all the ten questions, and pass on to student two, saying that see I'm I know uh, that question number five. Okay, I'm very confident. I'm ninety nine percent confident that I got question number five correct. But for others, I'm not that confident. Okay, so student two, what will do is student will student two will just look at question number five. If he or she is able to understand, it will try to solve it. Otherwise, it will ignore because anyway, the previous student has said that you know, very confident about this, right? So it yeah. will touch, but it will not spend more time. You will try to spend more time on the other nine questions, yes, sir. isn't it? And then you will pass on that to the third student, saying that no, first student is confident about question number five. I am I am confident about question number one and two. Rest, you please check. So what is happening is every stage your output is getting more stronger and stronger. Okay, this concept is called boosting. In boosting, output goes as input to another mod model. Okay, then you know, and you can decide how many boosting you want, how many uh, you know techniques you want. Ensemble is okay. You run same model. If it is decision tree, you're running decision tree every time. So you have. Multiple decision tree. You take the average of this. So, if you want to predict for value fifteen, let's say this is okay, two thousand, two thousand one hundred, two thousand two hundred, two thousand fifty. So, you take average of all the output, and you say this is the answer. This is what our uh, um, this, uh, random forest will do. Okay, bagging. Is very much like ensemble, multiple uh, you know techniques. But bagging says that these will be different models. Okay, so you can even use stronger models. Like you can run multiple linear regression, SVM here, decision it's tree it's here, random forest here. You know multiple algorithms you will run, and then you take the average of this, and you say this is the answer. Right. So you are not sure, so you will take the average value of all the algorithms, and you say this is the answer. So that's the difference between bagging and ensemble. Bagging is different models. Okay, ensemble is same model, no, and no taking bags. average and boosting, as the name suggests, you are boosting the output. You are boosting the accuracy basically. When you are running this, you are boosting the accuracy because when when uh, when it is passed from one stage to another. You are also passing the comment that this is, you know, I'm sure this is, I'm ninety percent sure, I'm hundred percent sure that this is correct, okay? And then you are passing to it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we are going to do random forest, which is ensemble. Ensemble means we are boosting the accuracy of existing model itself. So we are boosting ensemble, or oh, sorry, the random forest. Will boost the accuracy of random forest. Sorry, decision tree. Random forest will boost decision okay. trees. Yes, sir. Okay. So first in here output will be from uh, decision tree, and it will be input for uh, random forest. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. So. You have this here. Now let's go back to our code. Okay, so I'm going to say from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest regressor. Then regressor equal to random forest regressor, and here we need to say number of estimators. Okay, and estimates how many decision trees you want. I want five hundred decision trees. So it will take five, create five hundred such decision tree, and give you the output. Rest of the things is same, isn't it? So I'm going to simply copy and paste this one here. Now here again, okay, how do you decide it's five hundred? I mean, there is no way to know it is five hundred. Okay, so you will have to put it in a loop. Okay, so you will say here, print performing 
random forest regressor okay and here you'll say for i in range okay um we'll start with 50 okay so um 50 and let's go to 1000 and uh, and we will do with let's say 75 okay so 50 125 200 so on right And you can run it and see. Okay, so see, it is taking time. It's not as fast because it's running five hundred times. You see this. Yes, okay. RMSE is almost the same. Huh? This is why I get one second. One second. Yes, Yeah, so see, sometimes what happens, data is not much, right? We have hardly what, I mean, uh, 20 or 30 here. So you may not be able to notice. But when you see this co consistent, that means you should be happy that data is not changing by much. Okay? So but it cannot be exactly the same. Am I doing it right? Sometimes what happens is, you know, you, you know because you're running multiple things, right? This variable and this variable name sometimes could be different okay let's say you're doing ypred one and you take ypred so it will read the old value but here we are doing correct right A regressor okay it's not taking the old regressor right so yes oh, oh see here we are supposed to say i right not fun that's what i was wondering why it is getting same answer it is i right you want to change the number of estimators every time. Now you yes, see. Now it should be at least some difference. So RS, RMS is same. Just change in R2. Okay. See here. This is SE, not MSE. <laughs> so it's taking old. I told you, you know, many times what happens when you are doing multiple this thing, right? It happens. You get confused with the variables. This happens when you're running multiple algorithms at the same time. You may know so that's why it is same, right? It is, you know, it should be MSC, right? Now you see here, yes. Now you see. Yes. So see here, RMSC is okay. One thirty-one, one thirty-four, one thirty-one, one thirty. Okay, it became one twenty-nine, one twenty-eight here. Again, it is one twenty. Okay, one twenty sixth here, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, what happens is most probably, and again, again, you can't trust because it's getting created randomly. You have to run it again and again and see that consistently. If it is around four hundred, then you know, okay. Okay, so now you see eight. So, how, how will the complete conclusion, yes, this is the least value. You have to run it multiple times. That's what I'm saying. There's we'll no short it, answer. Yeah, yeah. We'll run yeah. it multiple times. But See, we, we, that's all what I'm the saying. time, it's getting reduced, sir. No, no, it will not happen all the time. Okay. See, the thing is, you do not want to answer. The, the answer is not what is RMSC. Answer is, what should be my tree how many trees should i take right not rmsc you are using rmsc to come up with number of trees so if number of trees is always around 300 400 you put 350 and that is your number of trees you're not going to write, write the answer as rmsc in the question paper isn't it okay so it is see it is now seven nine thousand again back to nine thousand yeah So you have to run it multiple times, multiple times and see the pattern. And then you see that, okay, decision tree is giving us R square value of this. And this is the right approach. Okay, this is definitely better than SVM, isn't it? This is random forest classification. Yes.
okay yes sir okay so these are some of the uh, algorithms then you have something called as ridge uh, lasso and elastic net regression okay ridge uh, lasso elastic net regression um, uh, and then that will be our last discussion on regression of course uh, towards the end again we'll discuss ridge lasso elastic net okay these are useful or these are used when you have very few data to train your model when you have large volume of data to train then it's not a problem okay you can uh, use any of these but when you have very few data to train okay then um, then we use ridge lasso and elastic net okay the so concept of both are same okay um, uh, we you know we add a penalty factor okay so in ridge we add x penalty factor in lasso we do x square penalty factor and elastic net we add them together so it is the squared okay the loss function or error function in ridge is square okay now what is the concept here okay so let's say okay i said very less uh, right let's say you have only two training model well, we have only two value data training model okay so you get here and here now when you draw um, this training data set what will be the accuracy of the training set What is the accuracy of training set? In this particular case, sir. Yes. What is the accuracy of training set? Accuracy yeah. of training set RMSE. What is yeah. the accuracy of RMSE? RMSE of the training set. Zero, isn't it? The line is passing through both the points. So the error here is zero, absolutely zero, no error. But when you go with real data, because since you have only two point, definitely this is wrong. You know that this is wrong. It cannot be that. Training accuracy is giving you 100% result because you have only two points. So line will anyway pass you know, through two points and the distance between point and the line is zero. So that's why your error is zero. zero. But we know that, okay, this is not correct. What we are doing is not correct because in real time we'll have more values and the error will keep on increasing. Yes. So what we do is we purposely add an error, even though the answer is this regression line, we say that no, I will not trust this. I will trust this line. It adds an error. It adds an error. Okay. Now my question is why the error that it is adding, okay, why is this error, okay, on the closer to X axis? not closer to y axis see you can add if so you understand the purpose right because you know that your answer is wrong your model is wrong because you have very few data set in the training so you know it is uh, you know you'll get error you'll get wrong so you have to add some error now to add the error you can bring it down towards x axis or you can move it towards y axis also isn't it yeah something like this also you can do it yes sir why do we move towards x axis, not towards y axis? Maybe x is the... Think and tell. Don't tell maybe, maybe. You think and give some, some logic. Don't answer immediately. No, tell me. X when is the actually depend, uh, independent variable, sir. You are saying same thing. I stopped you. Still, you are saying same thing. Okay. So, see, yesterday we discussed that when you move towards x-axis, what happens to your slope? Your slope decreases. change in y by decreases. Yes, sir. Right? And when you move towards upper, your slope increases. Yes. Right? So yes. slope, when your slope increases, your slope will become 5, 10, 15, right? This is the numbers that you're increasing towards Y side. And when you're going towards X side, you get 0.5, okay, 0.3, etc. So what happens is when you're multiplying a 
coefficient okay here this means that your your change in value will be much one small change in x one small change in x will result much bigger change in y isn't it if you move even one centimeter here on this side okay what happens is okay it it moves very much okay so the impact of small error becomes much larger when it is on the other side towards the y y axis okay if you go towards the x axis the change will be much less okay so if you go towards here same size here if you go okay see the change is much less so we are introducing error we know we are introducing, introducing error you want error to have a much bigger impact or less less impact you want error to have less impact not much impact okay that's why to play safe we go towards the x axis side not towards the y axis side okay, okay. y axis side will amplify your error in the final thing but x axis will not of course it will you know error will be there but it doesn't amplify that big it is not going to show as that big because when you know you are wrong you want to be less wrong not more wrong right so that that is what you'll get towards x axis you'll going to get less wrong okay compared to y axis so that's why you know we introduce this concept of error because we have very less data on training set 2 3 5 you know single digit we know that we do not have enough data so whatever analysis we'll do will not be right so so why not put the error factor in analysis saying that i don't know so i'll add the error and generally we try to pull it down towards x axis because that's how that's why regression i told you right if somebody is 7 feet and if you want to guess what will be the uh, height of son or daughter you will say 6 feet or 6 and a half you will not say 7 and a half you want to move towards the average side of it right regression you are regrades you know you are decreasing okay okay if sachin's average is 50 if you have to guess his son's average okay you, you know you will guess 49 48 you will never say 55 52 right that concept you are bringing it towards x axis so that the error you know it is wrong because by looking at son's you know father's average i can't predict son's average you know i know i will be wrong but if if i have to predict i will bring it down okay it depends upon the average okay you, you know if your if the uh, if the average is good you'll bring it down to the lower side okay so the impact is much lower towards the closer to x axis side that's why we bring it down okay so um, okay in the notes uh, which i have already shared you have the formula okay so it adds a error factor to it okay now to run that model okay to run your um, your your region lasso model you will use it using a uh, linear regression only okay and um, uh, what is that uh, uh, okay um Yes. Okay. Um, wait. Uh, okay. This ridge. Nice. Right, so. Okay. Let me open the notes. Okay. I've already shared those notes with you. Yes. Sir.
and that will be towards the end. Okay. Okay, this is your SVR. Okay, so this is your SVR. You see the curves, right? This is what our uh, C and uh, gamma will decide. We'll discuss this in regression. Okay, so this is the decision tree that we discussed. Okay, it'll create decisions here. And then each of these has become one component. Random forest. This is the risk less. Okay. So yeah, you have two values here. So we are introducing errors, okay? And error will be towards x-axis side, okay? So this is the equation. See, mx plus c is a linear regression equation. You add lambda into m square for ridge, okay? And, and uh, lambda into m for lasso, okay? So in ridge, you are being even more safe, okay? Now, when there is, when you are expecting that values could be much different, okay, so it depends on data set, right? If you think that value is going to be much more different than what we have right now, so you prefer a raise in that case, okay? You want to be even more safe. That's why we are doing square, okay? We are bringing it even more down, okay? Lasso, when you think that more or less it's going to be similar range. So we go with lasso, okay? Elastic net is you add those error components together, okay? Region lasso, sir. Region lasso, yes. So what is lambda, sir? M is a uh, slope, I think. M, what is M here? M is the slope, right? Mx plus yeah. C, okay? Yeah, and, yeah. and lambda is the error factor that you're introducing. It's up to you, okay. whatever okay. error you want to introduce. Okay, sir. Okay, and all these things are in your linear model itself. So you don't have to import, right? So scale on the linear model. We'll have your linear regression, raise, lasso, elastic net, all of this. Okay. And when you run the ridge here, this is for ridge. Okay. You say ridge alpha equal to 0.5. Okay. Now again, okay. You have to play around the value 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 and figure out which is the right method. Okay, elastic net is combination, adding both, right? So you see elastic net. There you have M lambda square, one M into lambda. That's all, that's the difference. And last elastic net will add both of them. Okay, see, summation of uh, this one. So you're adding M square plus M into, M into lambda square plus M into lambda. Okay, and you can actually see the value here. Okay, when you have uh, uh, just two data set, right? Your your uh, linear regression is going to be 100% accurate. Two line, no error at all. But the, what you see here, 19.9, 19.99, this is the error we are introducing. So purposely we are introducing error in the training set so that our test set improves better, you see? 67 it becomes 74 with just introducing 0.1 percent error okay we purposely introduce so that you know we get less you know uh, accuracy on the training but on the test you saw it it actually increased by so much right yes, uh, so seven seven percent kind of thing so uh, this is what we do in uh, this lasso so Practice this, create this kind of table yourself. Tomorrow, when we meet, we'll talk about different concepts like what is underfitting, overfitting. Okay, uh, uh, okay, what are what is the problem? What is the error of doing overfitting? Over in the sense you are trying to make it even more accurate, accurate, accurate. <coughs> so yes, so tomorrow we will wrap up regression and we'll start about. So see, this is it, okay? You have to run all this. This is an example where you're running, you know, linear regression, raised lasso, elastic net, K, neighbors regression, decision tree, SVR, random forest. All of these we are running on the same data set. 
and then okay then you have to find which is the best okay so any question like, before yeah yes sir uh, the last one you have shown us this one yeah linear regression rates last and all uh, when we construct the data set uh, perform all this pre processing and then uh, when we train the data set to these modules like mm -hmm. these uh, uh, algorithms mm -hmm. finally we will be getting the result mm -hmm. and then just comparison uh, yes. comparing so tomorrow we'll do tomorrow we'll do yeah how long you can do comparison how long you should okay so please practice all this uh, regression and tomorrow we will wrap up our regression topic